Welcome to Linda's Creative Coiling. Today I'm showing how to start a basket on a gab. That's my name for a glued adaptive base. I have a base here, it's a dot painting that I made and I didn't want to drill through it um, and lose some of my design, so I'm gluing it to a base. I have this fabric, it looks like leather on one side and it's fabric on the other side. What I did was trace around my base and cut it out and trim it down to about a quarter of an inch. You can see I've got about a quarter of an inch left around my base. And then I used a Sharpie to color it in so that it was black and wouldn't be uh, so obvious. So that's how I started. I glued it on there. I used my E6000 and I was surprised I bought a a new tube and it turned out to be black. So that was perfect for this. Uh, it was just a surprise. I thought I was getting the clear one like I usually get. But that's how I've started it. I'm ready to go. I have a long length of thread. I'm using waxed linen four ply. And what I'm gonna, I've over waxed it with my little clump of beeswax. And the way to do that is just to over wax it like that. <clears throat> I'm going to take my pine needles and I have a clump of about, it's about three single, I mean about nine single pine needles. With mine it's three groups. And I'm going to tie those together. Tie them together with a knot. About half an inch or three-fourths of an inch from the ends. I'm going to tie another knot so they're really tied. So those are tied together. I'm going to take my thread. I have a long, fairly long thread because I want to be sure and have enough that I can get all the way around without running out. I'm going to trim my little tail off here to about half an inch. Trim my tail. Okay, I have my pine needles lying right on top there. I want to go from the back to the front, so I insert my needle at the back and come through to the front. Okay, then I can go over the top, take my next stitch, and I'm going to make my stitches about three-eighths of an inch apart. I come from the back, use my pliers, get that through there. My thread's going over the top. I'm going to need to start adding pine needles, but I'm going to wait another stitch. So I go over the top again, come in from the back at about 3 8 inch distance. And I'm stitching just so I'm, my, my needle is right up next to my base. My needle's right up next to my base. Pull that out. And pull it tight. Now this uh, fabric will start to pull up and that's what exactly what you want it to do so that it's real tight. What I'm gonna do is just continue adding pine needles and stitch all the way around. And then I'll join it up at the end. So I'm gonna do that and I'll show you how to finish it when I get back around. I've worked my way all the way around my basket and I've built up my coil so it's almost up to my gauge. I use a copper gauge, and it's a 3 8 inch. That's the kind I like the best. They come in different sizes, and depending on what size coil you want, you can use a different size, but I like using the copper gauges. Right now, I'm at the end, and what I need to do is join it back to the beginning. I used my scissors, and I trimmed off these needles at an angle. Trim those off at an angle so they'll lay in there a little more smoothly. And what I need to do now is just keep stitching. 
I'm at about 3 8 inch, stitch it about 3 8 inch and right up next to my base. Pull my stitch tight, pull it very tight. Take another stitch. Pull it tight. Now, what I want to do, I'm right here at the end where I need to join this. I want to flatten my new coil, flatten it down over those ends so that they're hidden and my coil is smooth. I want to make sure they're all hidden up in there. Sometimes it's a little tricky. Hide those up in there. I'm going to take another stitch. And I'm flattening that coil down over those ends where I started. Flatten that down. You can check and see they're hidden. All right, I'm going to take another stitch. Come up over. Go over the top. Keep flattening it to hide all those ends from the beginning. Now I'm back to the beginning. I don't want to continue stitching through my gab. I want to start using my stitches as my base. And I want my rows to go straight out. So I want my darning needle to go almost straight up, as straight up as I can get it. So I'm going to use that first stitch, that very first stitch, and I'm going to go as straight up as I can. And stitch through that. And continue to flatten it down, flatten that across there. Take another one. I'm not going back through my gab. I'm using just that little thread to come up and make a stitch. Just using that thread. And pull it tight. Now I can keep stitching. My rows can go out or up or whatever direction you want your basket to go. And that's a gab, a glued adaptive base. It's good to use anytime, like on this dot painting, I didn't want to drill through it. Or if you have a cabochon or some kind of stone or jewelry medallion that you can't drill through, you can glue it onto a base and start your basket that way. It works really well. I hope you like this technique and will come back and visit me again soon. Thanks. Hi, I'm Linda. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you liked it. I, if you would like to subscribe to my channel, you can click the subscribe button and ring the bell, and that way you'll be notified next time I post a new video. Hope to see you soon. Thanks a lot.